Hello, dog lovers. I think we're good to go. Welcome to another live weekly live show. Hope you're doing well. Everything is seems to be working. Uh, please, uh, if you are watching the show live, can you please tell me if you can see me and hear me in the chat area? Uh, just tell me yes. That would be great. Uh, hope you're doing well. I'm doing well. Um, just a water. I'm doing well. Uh, I hope you're doing uh, well as well as long uh, and doing you're safe and healthy and everything is going well. If you are new here, my name is Soro. I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. In this channel, we focus on training dogs without the use of treats, food, aversive tools like shock collars, prong, <laughs> prong collars, uh, choke chain collars, uh, force or domination. We focus on training dogs using a unique method of dog training, which is using play and praise. In this channel, I show you and teach you a lot about this method. Also, I share a lot of information about uh, dog psychology, human uh, psychology, dog owner psychology, how to train dogs, how to deal with behavioral issues, uh, last video that I had was about uh, leash aggression. Many of you had asked me uh, questions about leash aggression, and I decided to make a video about it. Uh, hopefully you saw it, and um, I got uh, lots of great feedback from it too. Um, this week I wanted to, uh, in this episode, I wanted to talk about, uh, many of you also have questions about uh, potty training. It seems to be one of those challenging uh, issues when you have a puppy or you have a dog and your dog or your puppy is having a lot of accidents indoors. And I understand it could be a little bit challenging. It could be a little bit, uh, um, you know, uh, difficult to deal with, but one thing that I want you to understand that uh, when it comes to puppies and uh, potty training, it's temporary. I have my puppy Annie here, she's sleeping on the side here. Um, you have to understand that this is a temporary situation. If a puppy or a dog is having any, no, uh, if a dog or a puppy is having accidents, is because uh, they're just having this issue of one, controlling their bladder, and two, uh, not knowing what they're supposed to do. Is and the th third one is more of any no. Third one is more of a stress related uh, issue. What I mean by that is this happens because uh, dogs become stressed. Let me just see. What no, I, I don't know. Uh, okay, my puppy, we just, uh, she just had a play session and she just had her, her lunch and now it's time to have a nap, not lunch, dinner. And uh, now it's time for her to have a nap. So she goes in the crate and she sleeps there. And the reason she's a little bit excited is because I'm uh, excited, I'm talking and she doesn't understand what is going on. So. The potty training is one of those things that, you know, many dog owners have are struggling because they don't understand what is going on, what they're supposed to do. One of the key things that you have to learn and understand is it's like a baby. Babies, you know, they eat and they do their business, right? That's all they, they simply do. Puppies also the same thing. They eat and they have to do their business. 
So what you have to do is you have to understand this, that they have to go more often. They're puppies, they're smaller, they're young, and their bladder is not, uh, is not they can control their bladder. So what happens is they, they have to uh, constantly go and do their business. So basically puppies, they need to go out every hour, two hours to do their business. Most of the time you have to take them after a play session, after sleeping, basically before, after, before and after sleeping, a play session and um, maybe eating as well. You have to take them out and just let them empty themselves. If they don't, you just take it in an hour later. That's basically controlling and managing. And it may go for maybe a week or two, maybe a month. Uh, but that's the that's the situation. That's how it is. You know, they have to learn how to control their bladder. So one dog, one puppy can, you know, learn within a week. One puppy can learn within a month. So it's just a matter of time. So basically, that's about it. If 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 you see that a dog is having a, you know potty issue, don't punish them and just let them uh, understand that. Okay, that wasn't supposed to be there. You need to do it somewhere else. So that's one of the things. And the other thing is, this is again, as I said, this happens mostly in adult dogs. If a puppy or a dog is doing the, its business, it's mainly because they're stressed. They're telling you that there's something going on, there's something wrong, and they need help. I need mean, no. Uh, all right, let's get started with the questionnaires. Uh, Robin saying hi thanks remember me yes i remember and i remember that uh, profile picture as well thank you for being here uh we have uh tanja hello from new zealand wow thank you for being here thank you uh for taking the time and uh, being in the live session uh feel free to ask me any questions that you have uh we have sahar uh, hi, this is Omid and Sahar. Can you please name a few foods which are specifically good for beagles? Also, would you recommend pills or drug for making beagles calmer? Any? <laughs> uh, no. Um, Omid and Sahar. I think I remember you guys. I th oh, yes. Uh, I just got a message that I'm supposed to call you guys too. Uh, so hopefully this is the question that you had and hopefully this is the answer you're going to get. Um, few foods which are specifically good for beagles. Uh, you know, beagles are just like any other dogs. It doesn't matter. In, in my opinion, breed doesn't mean matter uh, in the diet. You don't have to focus on the diet uh, when it comes to um, the breed, uh, the dog. Uh, all you have to focus in on uh, is feeding the right diet to a dog. The right diet usually for dogs is, we call it species appropriate diet. Species appropriate diet. What that means is this diet is ideal for these uh, species, which, is, which are dogs. Dogs are supposed to, and their uh, ideal diet is a raw diet. Not kibble, not dry food, no canned food. Uh, raw diet is the ideal diet for uh, dogs. You may not be comfortable with it. You may not know what it is. Uh, but basically, uh, Annie, no. Hold on, let me see what Annie wants. Annie wants to go and play over there. Go get it. Go get it. Uh, just let him play out. Uh, basically, what you want to do is feed your uh, dog a raw diet. Raw diet, you may not be comfortable or familiar with it. I have tons of videos on my channel about this uh, diet. Let me see if I can grab one uh, playlist that you can watch and learn about uh, raw diet. Um, hold on. Just give me a minute, I'll be right back. I'll be right back, hold on. I know, I'm going to 
in there. Okay, sorry about that. I had I had to take care of Annie. Annie wanted a, her toy. I had to go grab her toy. Okay. Let me see if I can grab that. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. This is what happens when you do live uh, with the puppy and also you run a business. Uh, Okay, so here's the link. I'm going to share a link with you, uh, dog food. I'm going to call it dog food. And you can watch that video to learn about uh, the, the diet. Now, this is a cooked format of it. it does It's not a raw diet format. But uh, in general, what you want to do is you either cook this food or you can feed it raw both are fine as long as you're not feeding kibble or dry food any no here's any any wants to say hi <laughs> why 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 is he why okay uh, all right and also, would you recommend pills or drugs for, for making beagles calmer? Not really. Um, if you are having issue, any no. So any no. No. Yeah. Hold on. Over here. On the couch. Okay. All right. So be firm. Be clear. As you can see, I'm being firm and clear to my people. No. Nope. Training is the solution for calming your puppy or your dog down. If you are depending on two pills and drugs to calm your dog down, you're not really solving the main cause of the issue. You're solving the, the you're dealing with it with a Band-Aid solution. So what you want to do is basically focus on training. You have to train your dog. You, many dog owners, they don't understand this. Training is the best solution. Training is something that you have to do every day with your dog. So one of the five essential needs of a dog is training. So here's the formula. You have to provide for your dog exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. Training is something that you have to do every day. You have to provide proper amount of exercise, proper amount of training, some socialization, a lot of care, and some affection. Right? If you stick to this formula, your dog is going to be calm. Your beagle is going to be calm. Training is everything that you, every day you have to do it with your dog, from basics to going to different levels. So what I mean by that is most dog owners, they just stick with doing one session of training, and that's about it. They, they forget about it. They don't continue on training their dog. So what happens is their dog gets uh, confused and stressed. They don't know what they, they're supposed to do. So for example, Annie now is excited because uh, mommy just left. Um, so she wants to go and see she's excited, right? So no. Nope. So training uh, helps the dog to learn what to do and what not to do. And one of the things that I suggest you to do is start from the basics what that means is you know for example music musicians when they want to warm up and they want to do something they focus on uh, practicing you know the basics like do re mi so lo si, you know they start praying practicing the basics and that's how they warm up and that's how you want to do with your uh, training you want to start from basic and get get to the point that you can have um, like really uh, intermediate and advanced level of training. Focus on training. You know, training is something that you have to do with your dog. 
So don't feel bad to train your dog. Invest time to train your dog. So hold on, let me take care of this again. Annie wants to go out and uh, do something. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Okay. And I am back. Okay, sorry about that. This is what happens when you are live. <laughs> uh, Tanja is saying, hi, Saro. Hello, thank you for being here. But by the way, Sahar, uh, uh, if, again, if you need more help, uh, let me know. Uh, you can send me an email and I can explain it a bit more. Uh, we have uh, Ger... I know this name. I, I've heard this name, Geraldine. Hi, sir. I'm wondering how to teach my dog to play. She's a three-year-old uh, rescue and afraid of squeaky toys or ball. She has only picked up stuffy toys once. Now, this is a good question. Uh, one of the things that you have to understand and also accept is that dogs, um, they like either uh, they like either play or praise. So you can uh, in, uh, encourage them to uh, learn and have fun with either of them, play or praise. Now, there are dogs that uh, they only like play. There are dogs who only like praise. There are dogs who only, uh, they like both of them. So your dog could be in one of those that doesn't really know how to play and how, doesn't enjoy play now. So you can focus on praise for now. Praise your dog. Make sure that you are using praise as a reward. Once you do that, and what that means basically is that your dog is trying to connect with you in different form, uh, more of in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, form. More is more uh, um, sensitive and likes to be connected to you more uh, in personal. Uh, level. Once you do that, if you start connecting with your dog in personal level and in deeper level and in more honest way rather than being forced, uh, that will lead eventually and will open the play uh, mentality. So start by connecting with your dog more in more deeper level uh, and the play will come. Uh, you can't force it. You can teach a dog to play. It, it is there. It is in their instincts. It is in their system. It will come out as long as you help them to discover it and open it. Good question, though. Thank you. We have um, Teresa. My new puppy arrives in a week. I want to lovingly and respectfully train her. Please cover with detailed steps to rake from the moment she arrives at her new home. Uh, wow. Okay. So one of the things that I would suggest is uh, when you bring the puppy home, don't give the whole house, uh, don't give the whole freedom of the house to for the puppy to go to wherever. Uh, you want to start limiting the the uh, the the freedom in the beginning because your puppy has been living in different environment with different um, you know different state of mind right and all of a sudden is brought to your life to your home so what you want to do is going to be stressed, so you don't want to overstress the puppy. So what you want to do is you want to start small, and then within a week or so, you want to start expanding the space that you're going to allow the puppy to go. So start with a crate, right? In a crate, maybe in your bedroom, uh, and leave your puppy, let your puppy to sleep in a crate by your bed, in your bedroom. Uh, rather than somewhere else, because puppies are very uh, insecure. So they need that security from you. You need to help them to be secure and feel 
safe and connected and have that security around them. So you can be that security. If you leave your cannot crate by your bed, that would be a good idea, good start. Um, start feeding and also feed and um, you know do it let it do its business uh, every two hours every an hour two hours just take it out and maybe great uh, get a x pen as well I, I don't know if you know x pen you know exercise pen um, get one of those and just put it around the, the bed or around the one area in the house and le let the puppy to be in there Puppy is going to be playing inside the crate, uh, inside of the pan. Uh, the crate is going to be there. It's going to be fed there. You're going to play with it there. And if it's going to come out, is only when it's done its business, right? You have taken the puppy out. Make sure that it's empty, and then bring it home. Then you can have it on your lap or on a leash or in a crate. Let's say you want to watch the mo movie on the in your TV on in your living room, the puppy is going to be in the crate. So be very careful about what you're doing. Uh, if you want, you can join my online puppy training course called Puppy Training 101. It's a good course to get started on learning all the basics. I go even more in details in uh, this pro uh, process of bringing puppy home what to do and what not to do so that would be my suggestion uh, let me see if I, uh, so you can uh, i'll let the banner say um, go to my uh, online uh, you can get my online courses all the information um, let me see should Uh, da, da, da. It's not working. Uh, I'll put the link so you can go to sorrow.training.com to learn more. Hmm. Nothing is working. Okay. For some reason. I missed this one. No, okay. You're going to the next one. Uh, you can, again, if, if you want to learn more about uh, puppy training and puppy training course, uh, visit my website, sorrowdogtraining.com. Uh, join one of the courses. We have Melania. On, on day one, when I bring home my beagle puppy, how do I get the puppy to sleep in its new bed in the crate at night? Also, how do you manage any the beagle pup during your meal time? Does she want food? Uh, good questions. So uh, on day one, when I bring my beagle puppy, how do I get the puppy to sleep in new bed in crate at night? Yes. So the first few nights, actually first month or so, you want your puppy to sleep in a crate by your bed. Uh, the reason for that, I suggest to do that. Uh, in old times, all trainers, all dog trainers would say, you know, put the dog in a crate and leave it somewhere far in, in a basement or something, <laughs> which was a horrible idea. Uh, that's how we screwed up many of the dogs psychologically. So you want to have your puppy in a crate by your bed, beside your bed, so your puppy can see you, can smell you, can sense you. So because they're very, they're lacking a lot of uh, insecurity. They're lacking insecurity, uh, security and their needs, is, uh, they need that safety, that security, that uh, support from you. So by letting them sleep by your bed, they feel and smell you and see you. Therefore, they will be more comfortable, more re relaxed to sleep at night and they will sleep overnight. Most of the time, if you do that, they will sleep throughout the night. But if you leave them somewhere else, uh, far from you, and they will be panicking and they will cry all night, and they then you have to wake up and take them out uh, every few hours. But in my uh, in my experience, when I brought Annie, um, the first few nights was you know I woke up maybe once or twice just to let her out, 
and go do her business. But after a few nights, she slept overnight because she was sleeping right by my bed, by our bed, and she could sense me, and she was relaxed and re resting throughout the night. Um, uh, also, how do you manage any the beagle puppy during uh, your meal time? Does she want food? Uh, the meal times, you mean when I when we are eating meals? When we are eating meals, she either sleeps or she's chewing on her toy and uh, our chew toy, uh, or on her. We have we have several chew toys. She either works on them or she's sleeping or she's in a crate. Uh, she hasn't been. Uh, bothering us when we have meals. So that's what I would suggest uh, to do. Uh, oh, great question. Uh, Teresa, I keep reading that beagles are stubborn. <laughs> uh, this is a personal, this is a, I would say, um, way of saying that dogs in general, you know, if you ask every dog owner, what, no matter what breed they are, they will say their dog is stubborn. No, my dog is stubborn. No, my breed is stubborn. Everybody will say that. Stubbornness is a human trait, is not a dog trait. In my opinion, uh, dogs are, if they're not clear on what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to do, they will become, they will look like they're stubborn. Here's an example. If, if for example, uh, in training, right? I tell the dog owner, uh, here's how you're gonna ask your dog to sit. You're gonna say name of the dog, the command, and you're gonna give a hand signal, right? You're gonna do this three, and that's about it. If your dog does it, you'll say good boy, good girl. If it doesn't, you just uh, you know show it how to do it, right? You're not gonna do anything other than that. So that's the step, right? But when as soon as I say, okay, you do it, they go, Rover, 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 look at me, Rover. I said, look at me, Rover, 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 sit, Rover, no, Rover, Rover. So then right there, they broke the formula. I, I just told you to say name of the dog, command hand signal once. So that's how it's supposed to be. The Rover, sit. That's all you have to do. Okay, the owner goes, Rover, 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 sit, Rover. You see, doesn't listen. Stubborn dog, it's not listening. That's how you, <laughs> the human is causing all this confusion, this uh, uh, not following the, the process and not being consistent. So when you're not consistent and you're not doing it properly, the dog says, hmm, I don't understand you. You're, last time you, you, said, you said my name two times. This time you said it five times. And last time you said sit, sit, sit. But this time you're saying sit, sit, sit. So I don't understand which one is which. What do you want me to do? You confuse the dog. And when you confuse the dog, doesn't, the dog doesn't do what you're asking it to do. So therefore you, as a human, you say, ah, my dog is stubborn. But that's the problem, you know, if you are not consistent, if you are not clear on what you do and how you do, then your dog is gonna get confused. You, your dog is not gonna listen. So you're not gonna get results. So these are the things that you have to learn by you know, educating yourself and understanding how you need to do things, what you need to do and how, to train a dog and you can learn all these on my online courses so it's it's not that they are stubborn it's just that the human is not clear great question great question uh Kadeen, i think it's it's Kadeen. Uh, i'm getting a beagle very soon where do you suggest i should buy one hmm. well if you could if you're interested in beagles Here's two steps that I would suggest. One is contact all your local uh, dog rescue organizations that you can search online and find out. Contact them all. First of all, ask them, do you have a beagle? 
And if they don't have a Beagle, say, I'm looking for a Beagle. Can you put me on the waiting list when you get a Beagle? Can you contact me? That's number one. Number two is uh, you ask a rescue organization that has the process of foster to adoption concept. And for now, just, you know, test drive a dog, go and rescue a dog, foster a dog, and try it for a month. See if you're uh, ready to have a dog. It doesn't matter if it's a beagle or not, but if you're ready to have a dog, try it, see if it works out, because if if you doesn't work, you know, the rescue organization is going to take the dog back. You're not committed to um, take the dog, rescue the dog, adopt the dog. Have that, op make sure that they have that option of returning the dog. And you wait until a, a beagle comes up. You know, that's what I did with Annie. I waited, waited a few years until I got the, the beagle that I wanted. Uh, number three option I would say is contact a legitimate, uh, honest beagle local breeder if you can find one. If it's a few hours drives, go and you talk to the breeder, you pick the puppy, make sure that you see the puppy and you spend time. You know, if you have to go a couple of times, a few times to meet the puppy and see the puppy and then pick a puppy, that would be better. Legit breeders, they will not push you to buy their puppies. Legit breeders, what they want to do is want to make sure that this puppy goes to a good home and they want to make sure that you're the right person to own this puppy. It's theirs, but you're taking over, right? So those were those would be my suggestions for getting a beagle puppy or any dog actually. Sap. Uh, hi Saro, love your content. I have a four month, thank you. I have a four month old miniature poodle who is house trained. My question is what age is appropriate to leave your dog alone and have access to your entire home? This is a good question too. I would say as soon as you feel confid confident and comfortable to have your puppy free in the house without your puppy destroying things, causing headaches, or getting stressed. So one part of it is you have to be not stressed. You feel comfortable, confident. You don't have to constantly supervise your puppy. On the other side, you want to make sure that your puppy is not stressed and overwhelmed with all this freedom that you've given to the of the house. Uh, because most dog owners, they have this concept that if I give the freedom of the house, my puppy or my dog is going to be happy. It's going to be loving me more and it's going to be fine and it's going to be fun and all that. But it's the opposite. If you give too much space to a puppy, especially to a puppy, a dog or a puppy who's not trained, who's not completely trained yet, they get stressed because more space means more a uh, place for them to uh, look after, um, do their business maybe, maybe do a lot of wandering. It, it gives them a lot of to-do list. And when you allow a dog or a puppy have a long list of to-do list, they stress out. So, so there is no certain age that is ideal. My puppy Annie now, she is six months old, almost six months old. And I give her the freedom of the house. But because I have worked on her and I've trained her, she knows where she's supposed to go and where she is not supposed to enter, what she's supposed to do, where she's supposed to hang out. So she has a couple of beds that she moves around those. And she walks around the house, but there are certain areas, for example, that she's not allowed, so she doesn't go. She knows that because we haven't allowed her to go in that room, for example, until now. So she has learned that room, I shouldn't go.
So all these things, you know, it's just a matter of you understanding when you feel comfortable and confident. Even though uh, she's six months old now and I'm giving her freedom, I'm, I'm still supervising. I'm not 100% trusting her because we haven't got there yet. But my older beagle, Harvey, uh, he is free to go wherever he wants because I know how he's, what is he capable of. Great question. Next question is uh, Thanja. Uh, Hi, sir. My boyfriend's dog, a golden lab, was not trained properly growing up four years old. He knows the basics of sit, lay down, and shake. When he widen in the house, he zooms for the kitchen. <laughs> um, first of all, it's a lab. That's lab mentality. You know, they zoom in and uh, they go for the kitchen. The kitchen is should be their favorite area, just like some beagles. Some dogs are very kitchen oriented. <laughs> and my beagle, uh, beagles are like that too. I, whenever I'm in the kitchen, they're in the kitchen with me, uh, which I don't mind uh, actually. Uh, that way I can supervise them. I can see where they are, right? Uh, but uh, one thing that I'm noticing, you're saying my your lab knows the basics of sit, lay down, and shake. These are these are not enough, you know. The basics is not never enough. Uh, basics are just the basic. They, they just give you and the dog some uh, form of uh, it's like ABCs of language, right? It's it it's not the grammar. It's not the big. Um, the part that you start writing sentences or even write uh, essays. Uh, it's just learning the ABCs. You know, ABCs is, is enough just to get started. So when a dog has just the basics, you can expect a lot, right? You have to, you have to go further than basic. At least go to intermediate level where you are able to completely control your dog. Uh, not completely, but somewhat you're able to control your dog. So here's what I mean. So basic level, what you teach is ABC, which in dog training is just sit, stay, calm, heal. That's about it, right? Lie down, maybe. Whereas, and and it's all uh, in the basic, it's all, uh, it's all within, you know, one, two, three minutes, no distract, low distraction, uh, and not enough distance. Whereas intermediate level, we add a little bit more distance. We work on three Ds. We call it three Ds: distance, durations, and uh, um, distance, durations, and oh, I'm, I'm um, forgetting distance. Oh, distance, durations, and distractions. So we work on these three. So it means there's a little bit more distractions, more durations that the dog has to stay or wait. And then there's more, dis uh, more uh, distance too between us and the dog. So that way, if your dog is 10 feet away, 20 feet away, you can say, Rover, no, and, or stop, or whatever, and the dog responds to that. So. You have to go to that level in order to be able to control a dog. So I I have done puppy level with Annie, for example, and now I'm starting to do the basics. And pretty soon I'm going to get to intermediate level with Annie. Uh, so you have to work on those so you can control uh, better and control your dog better. Uh, and the reason usually labs or dogs they do these zoomies and they run to the kitchen and they run around it's just that they're happy they're excited and you know there's nothing wrong with a dog being excited and happy uh it's a matter of are you able to control that excitement that's what it matters as long as you can control the excitement uh there's no uh, problem for a dog or a puppy to get excited so focus on those five essential needs. Uh, all right. So let me see where is the great questions, guys. Um, next, we have uh, Thanja as well. And he's never allowed inside without anyone. 
because he doesn't know how to behave. Any training advice so he can be, behave inside? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's my answer. Uh, start working on intermediate level. Go a little bit level higher than basic. And we have next question from Elizabeth Caruso. What time to put my 10 month old mini poodle to bed and when to take him out in the morning? He, he door, he door, the, he doors the sleep in the same room anymore. He does, um, he doesn't sleep in the same room anymore. Oh, uh, why is it that you, you the, your puppy doesn't sleep in the same room and as long as your puppy is fine and is dealing with not being in the same room that's fine i don't have the issue with that uh but as uh, you know this is one of the things that i suggest everybody to do it not including dog owners when in this day and age you know we stay up too long i do that sometimes too uh, I watch TV and all that, right? So what you want to do is around 9, 10, you want to start uh, lowering the activities. You know, overall the house energy level should start going down. You want to dim down the lights. You want to stop watching TV. You want to stop looking at your phone. What you want to do is you want to meditate, you want to read a book, you want to just sit around and, you know, one of the suggestions that I have also is, you know, when we go to bed, uh, we, we put our head down and we start sleeping, we start thinking about thoughts coming to our mind, we start thinking all about this different stuff. So before you get into bed sit down and think about those stuffs before you get into bed so you relax and if you relax and if you calm down your dog is going to feed off that energy as well it's going to calm down and it's going to start going to sleep naturally normally they feed off our energy so best suggestion that i have is nine ten o'clock start calming down, dim the light, to write the, read a book, maybe write a journal, you know, if you're thinking about thoughts, you know, for example, when you get into your bed, you're saying, oh, I should have done that, or, you know, uh, what do I do with that subject, you know, all these things, you can do it before you go to sleep, before you go to bed, maybe write them down, so you can, the thoughts can come out, into writing or you can if you can ma manage in your head just manage them in your head before you go to bed so once you are in your bed you're you're done thinking and you're just going to go to sleep and do the same thing with your dog you know let them feel that energy and um, relax and go to sleep and i would say you know at night a normal dog should sleep at least eight hours unless they can't correct themselves, uh, co uh, um, control themselves. And if they are going to start having, you know, if they need to go to do their business or something like that, you want to manage and control that overnight. Great question. Melania, my big old pup is eight weeks old. How soon can we switch from a dry food diet to a species spe specific diet, such as home cooked diet? Actually, you can start any time. The, the earlier you start, the better. The reason for that is the more you, more you feed your dog kibble or dry food, the more toxins you're adding to your puppy's system and body. The sooner you stop feeding the dry food and kibble, which is full of toxins, uh, process, is a pro highly processed food, full of, full of chemicals, all these toxins and chemicals are going to stop going in your puppy's body and system. There is actually no better time than now to stop feeding kibble and start feeding species appropriate diet for your dog. Start feeding right now, you know. Don't, many dog owners, they have this fear that, oh, 
it's not uh, balanced, it's not safe, it's not this. What you can do, there's three steps when it comes to feeding a diet, proper diet to your dog. The first step is just taking the step and that leap to get started. Just start feeding raw meat, some raw vegetables, just get started, you know. In a few months, start learning the, about the raw diet a little bit more. Learn what you need to do uh, and be a little bit uh, more uh, educated about this diet. And then in a in few months after that, you're going to get into be, be, becoming a, a pro in raw diet. So the first step is just to get started. And second step is to, to start, for example, adding uh, supplements, adding egg, adding fish oil, you know, adding uh, chicken bone, things like that. And once you get pro, everything becomes automatic or everything becomes normal and you just do it. So start feeding right away. And if you need more information about raw diet, I have several videos on my uh, YouTube channel. There's a playlist of raw diet, cook diet, and diet in general. Go and watch my videos. Go on my channel's playlist tab, find raw diet and food, yeah, and you'll see um, a lot of content in there. Uh, Sahar, thank you, dear Sahar. You are welcome. Um, Harsha, uh, about it. Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, let me see what's going on. Uh, hold on. I'll be right back, okay? And I'll answer your question. I'll be right back. <laughs> back that's what happens when you have a puppy my puppy had gone in the washroom and the door had closed behind her and she couldn't get out she couldn't she still doesn't know how to open the door um, my Harvey knows how to open the door <laughs> all right um, where was I okay uh, Geraldine thank you good to know she does like praise that's great take advantage of her liking being praised and use that to bond with your dog connect with your dog and then get into uh, play after that Melania thank you sir for answering my question you are very welcome um, Angela hi sir I love your videos thank you very much thank you that's very nice of you G great feedback how can I get my husky to jog with me without pulling at squirrels and birds sometimes she gets very excited when we are jogging and she wants to just run off good question hmm if a dog is prey drive and wants to chase squirrels and birds, what that means is, first of all, you have to improve the walk. It's not ready for jogging yet. The walk has to improve in order to the jog to improve. So you have to take step one, which is improving the walk. And then if the walk improves, which will give the dog the idea that I have to follow the human, and follow human's direction and follow you. Once the dog learns that without pulling and without dragging and without chasing things, has to learn that. And then you can start allowing the dog to jog with you. Um, so many dog owners, that's what they do actually. They, you know, 
as I was saying, there's there are levels that you have to take in order to get started on training and working with your dog. You know, basics. So, for example, I've started with my Annie uh, puppy training. Then I'm going to do basic obedience, and then I'm going to do intermediate level, and then uh, advanced level. So you have to go through these levels before you get to that level, the part that you can do anything with your dog. Most people, what they do, they do probably puppy training and they go to advanced level. You miss all this gap. There's a gap in between puppy training and advanced level. Uh, and if you miss that gap and you don't work on the dog uh, through those levels, you're not going to get the, the results that you want. So you always want to follow, go from, go to basics and then you go to the next level and next level and next level. These levels are basically, again, puppy training, basic obedience, intermediate level, advanced level. So the difference is puppy level is you just teach the dog two or three commands. Just simply just, you don't have any uh, expectation. You're just teaching the puppy one or two or three commands, just wording it for the puppy just to hear and get used to it. Basic obedience, you're expecting teaching the puppy the six command, commands, and it's right there, right? You're right by your dog, and your puppy is just learning to listen to you now. Intermediate level, you're adding a little bit of distance between you and your dog. You're going instead, and you're putting a little bit of uh, duration into it too. So in pup, basic obedience, for example, you're asking to the puppy or the dog to stay for two minutes, in an intermediate level, you're asking the, the the dog to stay for 10, 15 minutes. And in an advanced level, we off-leash the dog. We start off-leashing the dog, and we expect the dog to sit and stay and lie down from a distance, 30, 40 feet away, and to do everything that we they, uh, they've learned. And then we ask them, for example, to stay for you know 20 minutes. We push them to that level. Uh, so you have to go through these levels in order to have a dog who jogs with you. Uh, you don't want to drag the dog. You don't want to be dragged by the dog either. It's not fun for, which, uh, for any of you. So I highly suggest you to go through the process of training your dog. Great question. Julia Smith, I have a one-year-old lab who was very reactive to other dogs, never aggressive, just lunging. She's been fine for months, but now she has become reactive all over again, even with continued training. So what happens, I have heard this uh, situation, this condition happens to a dog. What happens is uh, a dog is stressed and you start working on the dog and it temporarily distresses the dog, but what happens is because you start slacking on the training um, or being, um, oh, it's learning, it's fine, uh, then the dog gets stressed again. Um, aggression in general is a sign of a dog uh, that is stressed and anxious. Uh, and that's the outcome of being stressed. So what you want to do is you want to work on distressing your dog. Um, if it's going up and down, if it's happening in that form, and we call it unpredictable wave, uh, and the dog becomes unpredictable, I would suggest to not to put your dog in that situation that gets stressed or reactive. Uh, therefore, you can manage and control that uh, for a for a long time, and aggression and lunging and being reactive, it's a, it's a condition and situation that takes almost a year, depending on each dog. Um, so just focus on uh, getting a, a longer, working longer time with your dog. Uh, but, Berenica, Berenice, Berenic, Bere, I'll call you Bere. 
<laughs> Hi, Sarah. How can I get my one-year-old Rottweiler to stop lunging at people and dogs? She doesn't want to attack them. She wants to play everyone, but comes off aggressive. This is very common in uh, dogs. Um, I know Roddy's, they're, you know, very friendly, actually, very fun, cute, uh, and friendly dogs. But, you know, many people, they don't see that. They see the aggressiveness in their, uh, their in that breed. Uh, so what you want to do is teach your dog to sit and stay. The two commands of sit and stay. This way you can control and manage your Roddy and ask it to sit and stay. And when they sit and stay, they calm down. So therefore, they are focused on you rather than whatever is happening. Whether it's the dog, it's a, it's a human, whatever is causing your Roddy to get excited, you want to redirect that um, uh, excitement to you. So focus to you. So if, if you teach and practice your Roddy to sit and stay, then what happens is they're going to start focusing on you. It's going to calm down. It's going to give a time for that person and that dog to um, to be a little bit more uh, comfortable to approach you. And if your dog, in, your, in mo most cases, I highly suggest dog owners, if you want your dog to play with the other dog and say hi to other dog or other humans, Ask your dog to sit and stay and calmly approach the other dog or other person. If you don't, if you see that your dog is not calm and is not listening to you and is not sitting and staying, your dog doesn't get to uh, have a good time. It's like the, the other dogs or other uh, human or whatever it is, they're the reward. If you if you sit and stay, I'll let you to go and play and say hi to other dog. But if you don't sit and stay, you're not going to get your reward. That's the that concept that you want to uh, think of. What I skipped? Cash. Okay, let me. Let me see. Did I skip cashy? Okay, I'm so sorry. There are lots of questions coming in, but Kashi, I'm so sorry. I don't see your question. Uh, all I see, all I see is this about it. I don't know what it means, Kashi. Can you repeat the question? Um, Okay, I'm so sorry. I don't I don't see the question. Please repeat the question. Ethan Grata, hello, hello. I'm new here in quarantine. How do I play with my dog? Oh, <laughs> uh, good question. Um, let me see. I'll get um, um, I'll get the video. I actually post a video. Um, I think a week ago uh, about the games that you can play with your dog. Um, I'm going to get the link and I'm going to post it in the chat area uh, in a moment. Uh, it's just that my computer is a little bit slow, um, but I'm going to get it. Uh, just let me. Okay, got it. There are some games that you can play. Uh, so I'm going to name this uh, games to play. Uh, let me see if it's going to work. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. For some reason, the computer is slow, but the, the link is in there. Um, so there are some games that you can play. In this video, I share with you five games that you can play with your dog. Um, we have the next question, Mary. My 20-month-old black mott wash cur cattle dog mix, wow, still uses her teeth on me when she plays. I've had her since she was three months. She's better, but still can hurt me. Any advice? Uh, if a dog is still teething, like, you know, is using you as 
it's basically using you as its playmate. So you want to provide a little bit more activities, more mental and physical stimulation for your uh, cattle dog. Um, especially if you have this breed, they're very working dogs. So I would suggest focusing on about 70% mental activity, which is uh, training, training and playing games uh, that use allows the dog to use its brain. So it's mentally stimulated uh, better and often. Uh, rather than physical activities. Uh, they need some physical activity, but this type of breeds, they need more mental activity. And if you provide more mental activity, it will reduce the stress level. I would suggest like, you know, playing games that I shared in the video, you can play those games with your puppy. Um, you, can, um, you can train it you know, get into training at home, you know, basic level, intermediate level, and also advanced level, get into those levels. Um, provide more playtime with other dogs if possible. You know, if you know cer certain dogs that are safe and you can allow them to play together, that would be great. So things like that. Yeah, I was wondering what mouthwash was. Uh, okay, mouth cur. okay. <laughs> All right, got it. Um, Elizabeth Crusoe, next question. Uh, the, the reason he doesn't sleep in my bedroom anymore is because he started watching me and wouldn't settle down even though I was just reading a book, um, wanted to be with me. Uh, so in that case, what I would do is put it in a crate and cover it with a towel or a sheet, cover the kennel. Uh, I think you have one of those crates that has openings and they can see. At least close the front uh, or the sides. Of it. Uh, so it gets a little bit dark and intimate for the puppy to relax. They don't really have to see you. They can just, um, you know, I'll show you here. So I have this crate. So I have this crate, right? Put a towel on top and it closes. So you have, you know, this one of these, right? Let me see if I can show you. So it's one of these, right? I have, I have this, um, this is closing. It, the door broke, so I'm just putting this. Uh, so just put a towel on top and close it. So this way they feel a little bit more cozy in there. It's darker and it's, uh, they feel a little bit more, much more better when it's closed. Uh, so that would be my suggestion. Angela, thank you for your advice. So I'm working on training my Husky. I've started your play train method with no treats. She gets frustrated easily. So I'm hoping it will help her become more patient. Um, yeah, you know, if it's getting frustrated easily, that means you're training it. I, there are two reasons that happens. You're either training it too long or you're yourself are confused. You're not exactly sure what you're supposed to do. Therefore, your dog becomes frustrated too. So if you get frustrated, your dog becomes frustrated too. So you want to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing and then tell your dog to do it. All right, the last question tonight is from Paulina. Hello, I have a 20 month old male, male beagle. He loves going for walks overall. He, he's good on the leash, but he pulls as well. How do I stop him from pulling? Uh, the way you want to stop it from pulling is, I would say 60 to 70% of the training should be inside of the house. What I mean by that is you want to make sure that you train your puppy to walk properly inside of the house, first of all. And if you see that your dog is doing well inside and is listening to you and is not pulling on the leash, then next thing that you want to do is you want to uh, You want to make sure that you add some distractions, forms of distractions in the house, like food, toys, maybe 
if you have friends or family to come and help you to get become distract, distractions, act as distractions, and see if you can manage and control your dog still in the controlled environment and practice those more. Uh, hold on, and I'm gonna share a, a video playlist that I want you to watch it and um, learn a little bit more. Uh, but that would be my suggestion, you know, practice a lot more indoors before you uh, go outdoors. If you can't control your dog indoors, you won't be able to control your dogs outdoors. So therefore, I suggest to create them situations and distractions indoors so it's controlled environment that you can control your dog and teach your dog and practice with your dog before you put it in that situation that it's uh, outdoors and uncontrollable. That would be my suggestion. And thanks, I agree, she needs more mental stimulation and training. Kashi just got skipped again. Hold on. Kasha, Kashi, Kashi, I don't see your question. Um, wow, Thanja just um, used the, this is my first, uh, what do you call this? Let me, I, I can't remember what you call this. Um, Thank you so much for your help, Sarah. Definitely subscribe and support from uh, from me and my family. You are awesome throughout and clear. Oh, thank you. That is very nice of you. Um, this is, a, um, what do you call them? This is for my first support on the channel. Thank you very much, Tanja. I appreciate this and it means a lot to me and I'm just going to figure out what this is. can't remember what it's called. Um, but I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, okay, hold on. And this is happening right before Paulina. Pauline. For some reason, I'm not able to see your question. You know, a few weeks ago, we had this problem with another viewer uh, that was asking questions and I couldn't see. I don't know why this happens. And today is happening to you, Kashi. Uh, Kashi, right? Kashi, yes. Yes, donation. Yes, it's called donation. A super chat. Yes, that's what I'm. Tr uh, that's what I'm uh, trying to figure out. Yes, this is my first super chat, and I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for the super chat. That means a lot to me, and I'm gonna really celebrate uh, having this uh, first uh, super chat uh, um, donation done to me. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, Everybody else, can you see Kashi Tree's question? Yeah, I think we can. For some reason, we can't see your question. How come we can see this? You're saying that you asked the question. Can you try one more time? For some reason, I'm not able to see your question. Um, you know, Mary can't see it. Tanja can't see it either. Okay, let me see what is, I'll be right back. Hold on one second. Let me, I'll, I'll figure out what it is. Hold on, just one second.
For some reason, I'm not able to find it. Yeah, we are not able to see Kashi your uh, question. Yeah, we can see your other chats, but we can't see the actual question. So let me know if you, there is any other question and I'll answer it. Meanwhile, while we are waiting for Kashi's question, um, I hope you enjoyed this live show. I really enjoy coming and talking to you and talking about dogs and I really appreciate your support. And um, yeah, um, we'll see if the question shows up. And uh, I'm going to wait a few more minutes to see if the questions, uh, the question of Kashi shows up. For some reason, I'm not able to see it. Hmm. I don't see it in the live chat and also I don't see it here. So thank you very much. Kashi, what, what you can do, uh, go and ask the question in the comments area and I'll answer it there, okay? Um, that is bizarre, yes. I don't understand why this happens. Uh, th this is my second time I'm experiencing with one of the viewers um, who can't, the, some reason, some question. It could be your question has certain words that uh, YouTube is blocking. Maybe ask the question in different form. I, I That's my only, uh, that's my only guess. Yeah, Elizabeth, yes, you. it was you, yes, I remember that. Yes, you were the one who were having this same problem, but tonight your question came through. Uh, and we, I read it, right? Uh, let me see, yes, I see your questions and all that. Uh, but for some reason tonight it's happening to Kashi. So it could be, I'm guessing, uh, YouTube is blocking some of the words and some of the sentences or some of the members for some reason. Uh, all you have to do is just ask the question in the comments area and I'll answer it, okay? Sorry about that, Kashi. And to everybody else, thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. If you're new here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon as well so you will get notified as soon as I post my next video or if I go live. Uh, next time I'm going live is Friday at 12 uh, p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And my next video would be uh, posted on Saturday. Hopefully you enjoyed this live show. Thank you for very much for being here. Um, one more time, I want to thank. Um, hold on. Um, Tanja, Tanja Eliza. Uh, I think that's what I, Ilanza. Tanja Ilanza. I want to thank you again for your super chat uh, donation and thank you and appreciate it. I really uh, appreciate that support and everybody else. Thank you very much for being here and I'll see you next time. And until next time, have fun with your dog. All right.